more of those kinds of injuries in the summertime. It's a cool summer morning, and Sheila's leisurely horse ride, one she's done hundreds of times before, is about to take a tragic turn. Without warning, the horse bolts, throwing Sheila to the ground. Found unconscious, Sheila is flown to Toronto's Sunnybrook and Women's College Health Sciences Centre. We were six kilometres from either the nearest house or even four kilometres from the road. I had a 15-minute window. If I'd have stayed and even doing CPR on her, I could have been there for two days. Nobody would have seen us. Originally, uh, GP saw away at the scene. Sheila the arrives at the trauma the unit in a coma. It is likely she has suffered serious damage to her brain, yeah, and the team must quickly assess the full extent of her injuries. She's, her blood pressure has been as low as uh, one, one The trauma team has to touch Barry's spine to examine him, and this will be very painful. But they have no choice. They need to determine why he cannot feel his left leg. The GCS scale rates the severity of a brain injury. Anything below eight is considered severe, and Sheila scores a seven. Now it's clear to the team that this young equestrian is living on borrowed time. Could one, someone get uh, right here, actually? Just minutes ago, 40-year-old Barry Kaufman was rushed to Sunnybrook and Women's Health Sciences Center by air ambulance with multiple face and back injuries. When we initially saw him, he was saying he couldn't move or feel his legs at all. Barry, how you doing? We're going to have a whole swarm of doctors coming down, have a look at you from head to toe and see if we can figure out what's going on here, all right? Barry was alone at his country home, getting it ready for his young family's arrival when the cable he was using to pull tree stumps became entangled in the axle of his all-terrain vehicle. Without warning, the ATV lurched backwards and rolled over him, crushing him beneath it. Fearing he'd be left helpless for days, he found the strength to haul himself up onto his ATV and drag himself to the house where he called 911. The threat of a spinal cord injury is extremely high, so paramedics have stabilized Barry's spine to prevent further damage. This buys trauma team leader Dr. Perzowski the time he needs to figure out why Barry can't feel or move his legs. Uh, at the time when they encountered him, he wasn't able to feel anything in his legs and was having difficulty moving his legs. I'm not sure if it was complete loss of motor power or sensation, but. He remembers most of it, but just to be sure, we'll scan his head and face and uh, make sure there's no other injury we're missing there. See, don't move, don't move. The team must determine quickly if Barry will need surgery. There's only a four-hour window of hope with injuries like this. If they don't act fast, damage to Barry's spine may be irreversible. Sunnybrook Hospital is the last place 29-year-old Chad Zerbach expected to find himself on a gorgeous summer afternoon. Three minutes ago, he was flown from a northern lake, unconscious and losing blood rapidly from his smashed face. Yeah. Okay. Talk to me, baby. Okay. Chadwick is a 29-year-old male who's on the second floor of a two-story uh, boathouse, fell off the railing, hitting his anterior face, jaw, and throat on a railing, rolled into the water, no loss of consciousness, swimming immediately. Got a total disruption of the jaw. This face and his whole lower jaw is disrupted and flattened on the right side, just gone. Uh, left side is uh, uh, laceration all the way up to here. It was scary because you can only imagine when somebody's face of all, of all things is falling. It was literally falling off. I had my best friend just was shaking. She was just shaking. With such horrific injuries, EMS had to heavily sedate Chad. Uh, he received paralytic, uh, it's now been 35 minutes, he got 50 of uh, rock uranium. He's, uh, he's really hard to keep sedated, he's a big guy. Haven't had the heart rate under 100. In the 60s when he was uncomfortable, and he comes down to about the 130s when he's better. Chad is fighting against the drugs, and this is causing erratic spikes in his heart rate, a dangerous condition that could lead to a deadly heart attack. But until the trauma team leader arrives, all the team can do is stabilize Chad as best they can.
It's been 14 minutes since Sheila was brought to the trauma unit in a coma. She was not responding appropriately. She sometimes actually had evidence of going to coma, going in and out of coma. She uh, had a GCS of seven. And she started having seizures. A few hours ago, a dreamy country ride turned into a nightmare when her horse threw her to the ground with great force. Now she rides dangerously low on the scale of devastating brain damage, and she's sinking fast. Right now, she's a person who had a head injury, came in in coma, so these patients have a high mortality, and usually even those that survive also have a, a chance of not doing well. Dr. Rizzoli needs to get Sheila to CT and find out what's going on in her brain. But the team discovers a more urgent problem. Sheila has a collapsed lung and is struggling to breathe. Chest, she has uh, four broken ribs on the right side. She has uh, about a 10% uh, pneumothorax on her right side. I want to get ready to put a chest to Failing breath and possible head injury is a deadly combination. Dr. Rizzoli must insert a chest tube and reinflate Sheila's lung before her brain literally starves to death. I hate germs. I get attached to things.